Okay, I want to come back to something which is a bit more closer, public housing. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, many of my agents, many of our salespeople, and actually even though we say that we have got more than 40%, to be very precise, we have got 48% of public housing market, and that's huge. Um, one of the key things here is this, um, a problem that was raised about the dropping lease, the leasehold of an uh, aging public housing property, and it has also became, to an extent, very much political uh, last year when our Prime Minister had to address the issues about concerns in the market. Um, and a lot of issues are also in the near future, late future, maybe, maybe you who will have to solve some of these concerns as far as policies are concerned. Um, if you have, you have, have all of us no time to come, uh, you will be heading more responsibility. Yeah. So, what do you think about the public housing uh, dropping list and what is their future for Singaporeans owning such properties? Well, thanks Ismail for the question. Your question reminds me of, um, you know, when I was running the monetary authority, I had to travel quite a lot. So, on one trip, I was traveling to one of the key cities in the Asian region, which I shall not name. So, that evening, my staff, one of my staff who was with me on the trip said, uh, Mr. Hink, uh, this evening, there's no uh, official program, so can I go and do, run an errand? I said, yeah, go ahead, you know, you're not needed for the work, go ahead. So, I said, then she told me, you know, I have to run an errand for my grandma. I said, well, that's very nice of you, you're so close to grandma, you're running errand. So what, what are you going to do? Say, my grandma had a boyfriend when she was young. I said, your grandma still remember your boyfriend? He said, yeah, yeah. You know, after so many years. And he said, when they were courting, boyfriend said, let's get out of Singapore. You know, there are more opportunities elsewhere. So he came to this city that we are in today. And after so many years, Grandma still thinks of me from time to time and say, please go and check whether he's still alive and what is his life now. So I say, important mission, please go ahead and do it. Next morning, I met her and the, the, the other staff uh, over breakfast. And I said, how was the trip? I said, ah, I, I found Grandma's uh, old boyfriend. But, you know, I feel so sad. I said, why? I don't know what to tell Grandma. Grandma's old boyfriend is living in a rental unit. He's been living there for years. It's a small, tiny little unit. And, uh, you know, he is poor and barely sustaining himself. And when I look at the house that he was renting, I felt so sad. So I said, why? He said, well, I'm so glad my grandma stayed back in Singapore. Not only, not because, you know, then I came out of that chain, right? But, Grandma bought a HDB flat, you know, when she, when she got married. And thereafter, she upgraded to another flat. And the family has been living together. Grandma's children and grandchildren all own their own HDB flats. They all stay in HDB. They all own HDB. And Grandma's flat that she bought is now worth, and that was almost 20 years ago, is worth hundreds of thousands. And Grandma has the option to do what she wants with the house. Grandma's boyfriend is living in a rental unit. And I said, oh dear, what are you going to tell Grandma? I said, I don't know what to say to her. You know, but maybe I'll just say something nice that, that, that at least the boyfriend is alive. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I, I share this story because when you think about it, uh, the one big policy that Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and, and his team of people did for all Singaporeans was to have this compulsory CPF savings and from there you can use it to buy a house and that so many of our citizens own a property. And as I said, the, we have to look at property not in the short run but in the long run, as to how the economy is growing and how wages are going up. 
So in the earlier years, our GDP was growing significantly, you know, 8, 10, 12 percent. And that is the reason why the government had the ability to build all these houses, and that's why our citizens have the ability to buy those houses. And as I said earlier, the, you asked me about long-term property trend. Property prices depend on economic growth. So in the earlier years, when the economy was growing strongly, property prices shot up. Now, who owns those property? Our citizen. And as a result of which, many of our citizens now have a nest egg. Not only do our citizens have a nest egg, I as finance minister have a nest egg because previous finance ministers did not just anyhow spend the money, but we kept it as reserves. So how many of you know that this year's budget and last year's budget, the returns, 50% of the returns from our reserve, known as net investment returns contribution, is the biggest source of revenue for our expenditure. More than GST, more than income tax, more than corporate tax. Which means that even if I double GST or double corporate tax or double income tax, I still won't have enough if not for this big sum that we get. And it's 50% of our return. So we are very lucky that in the earlier years, in the first uh, you know, 30 years in particular of our independence, when the economy was going strongly, many of our people bought property, the government was careful in the spending, and now the government has a nest egg which we are now spending for our people, and our people have a nest egg in the form of a house. And compared to my staff's uh, you know, old boyfriend, who was still suffering in the rental unit. And that's the reason, by the way, why we have fewer tycoons in Singapore than many other cities. Now, the, as to a question, right? So, the, it's very important for us to recognize about this lease. Now, let's imagine that today you are a 25 year old and you decide to get married and buy a flat at the age of 25. The, our latest data on life expectancy is 85, which means that you buy a 99 year uh, property you are, and you stay from 25 to you are 85. Right? 60 years. And 60 years, you still have 33 years left. Is that still value in the flat? Absolutely. Right? So, this debate that is going on that, no, this is a terrible hoax. Property, uh, you know, this is Matiam Renter. I mean, come on, get real. At the age of 85, you decide whether you want to pass on the property to your, your children. You decide what you want to do with it. There's still value in the property. What is the value of the property? It depends on how well the economy continues to grow. But there will be value in the property. It's not going to go to zero when you are 85. And two, even if you decide that earlier, instead of waiting at 85 and do something about it, I decide to uh, do a lease by that. I decide to move to a smaller property because my children are all grown up. So why do I need a five room or a four room? I don't need three bedrooms anymore. It's only husband and wife, you know, old couple. I've seen many of my residents move into a studio apartment. And they're happier because they say, well, look, it's easier to maintain, easier to clean, and just two of us. And I'm happy to live with neighbors who are about our age. We do things together. And yet, I get value out of that flat. So I think it's important for us to see that in perspective. And sir, we agree. Uh, at the end of the day, Singapore being small, 99 year lease, we have the HDB a private property, one day it will have to expire so that the subsequent generation will continue to have land and we are supportive of that. Yeah, and we are positive about that. By, by the way, I, I should share with you a story. Just uh, two weeks back, I was in a session like this, a smaller one, of course, and somebody uh, said, you know, Mr. Lee, it's the fact that we have 99 year lease. Uh, and indication that the government thinks that Singapore can only last 99 years. <laughs> then somebody came up and said, no, it is because we believe that Singapore will last forever. That's why you have 99 year lease. So I asked the gentleman, I said, can you please explain? He said, exactly what Ismail just said. At the end of 99 years, the property can be recycled and you find that you can have new users for it. And that is why for our industrial estate, the leases are even shorter. 
The reason is that the industry will change and transform. And if somebody owns a land and decides that you know, I'm going to sit on it forever and I'm going to do nothing, you cannot do anything. And the economy will not grow. Our young people will have no opportunity to buy. So if I sit on a, you know, HDB is free home property, lasts forever, then what will happen? It means that the next group of people can never buy unless you buy a resale. And it's because we think that Singapore will last, we hope, forever, that we have a policy that we can continue to recycle and that the land can be put to better and better uses. Thank you, sir. The next question I'm going to ask you here is something that came from a couple of my sales people. Yep. I think we were talking a lot of macro then they say, yeah, tell me, tell me what you are, you can get something for me. Yep. Uh, I'm